Good afternoon and welcome to a quick bulletin from the angry astronaut. Getting ready to depart the UK once again. Um, I'll be leaving in the next few days. I haven't really established an exact departure date yet, but will do so uh, very soon. There are things to report on across the Atlantic, most significant of which, of course, is the imminent orbital test of Starship. But what really does an imminent orbital test mean? You see, we've been watching them stack and unstack Booster 7 and Ship 24 and other vessels for some time now, along with static firing, that sort of thing. But this time does appear to be different. And by different, I mean there are announcements coming out and it seems very confident statements Again, mostly by Elon Musk, who knows what we can make of those, but still statements that are expressing a great deal of confidence about launching a full stack either towards the end of February or sometime in March. And given the fact that they have currently stacked S24 and Booster 7, it would appear that that's the stack that's going to be launched. But is it? In my opinion, no, it isn't. Instead, what we're going to be looking at is a series of tests that are going to be carried out with Booster 7 and S24, including perhaps wet dress rehearsals, more static fires, that sort of thing. But it's extremely important to keep in mind that Booster 7 is a test article that's really been through the ringer. And even though it falls within SpaceX's usual standard of practices to just go ahead and and try to take off with whatever test article they happen to be using at the time, this time is different. And that's why I think things are going to be different with this particular orbital test. And we're going to find out all about that in just a moment. <laughs> However, real quick, if you're wondering again why I'm wearing another unusual suit jacket, well, I got this at Suit Direct in Plymouth, the city of Plymouth here in the UK. Um, please look this shop up. It's in a uh, shopping mall in Plymouth, real easy to locate, and they do really, really good deals, especially if you happen to mention the name of my channel, and they don't just do eccentric suit jackets like I enjoy wearing. They do stuff that would be very good for formal wear, business wear, etc. In some ways, I'm going to consider them one of the first sponsors that I've ever had for an episode. I mean, not officially in the way that YouTube would recognize it, but still, they're a great outfit. Suit Direct in Plymouth. Stop by and tell them I sent you. Remember this? Well, SpaceX certainly does, and this is one of many reasons that I believe that Booster 7 is not going to be involved in any kind of orbital test. Look at the power of that explosion. It was so forceful that a friend of mine who was driving an Uber in South Padre Island thought that he had just gotten into a wreck from the impact of the shock wave, and there were numerous people in South Padre Island and elsewhere who thought that a vehicle may have collided with their house or something along those lines, given just how violent this explosion was. And this is going to be a pathetically small explosion compared to what might happen with a full-fledged anomaly on the pad. And keep in mind, Booster 7 and its structural integrity, metal fatigue, and everything else that engineers like to talk about was subjected to all of this and a great deal besides. Back in early October, when SpaceX was also putting together a full stack, they experienced what amounted to a 
near fatal cataclysmic anomaly. There was a sudden drop in pressure during a routine venting of gas from the booster. Had the pressure inside the booster dropped below than the ambient pressure outside the booster, something that nearly happened reportedly, it would have caused the booster to contract like a tin can exposed to a sudden pressure change and the whole damn thing would have come collapsing down around dozens of workmen who were still on site at the time. A cataclysm like that would have put the entire project back substantially. And keep in mind, it was Booster 7 that was exposed to that near anomaly as well. So why has SpaceX decided to stack this workhorse along with S-24 in anticipation of an imminent orbital launch? Well, in my opinion, because they have no intention of launching Booster 7. They nevertheless have a great deal of testing still to do, including, of course, a wet dress rehearsal, a number of other static fires, including, of course, a full 33 engine static fire while the ship is fully stacked, and a variety of other tests before they actually risk an orbital attempt. Now, also, they may attempt to use Booster 7 in a suborbital flight simply to prove the flight worthiness of the booster because even though the orbiter or starship or whatever you want to call it has flown in the past, the booster has not and it might be a good idea to prove to the FAA that this is a flight worthy test article before they send it flying out over the Caribbean on a trajectory that's going to take it dangerously close to Havana regardless of which way they decide to launch it. The FAA is going to be very reluctant to let the biggest rocket in human history fly over such a sensitive area if it hasn't been fully proven. And the only way to fully prove the booster is to fly it on a suborbital mission first to prove that it's going to be easily controlled and capable of flying without any significant mishaps. Now, of course, all of this is pure speculation. It's entirely possible that SpaceX intends to push ahead with Booster 7 and S-24 once they've completed the wet dress rehearsal and the 33-engine static fire come hell or or high water just to see what's going to happen as they have done a number of times in the past. But what makes this launch attempt so different as I have mentioned so many times before is this is by far the largest rocket ever launched in human history. I'm not going to talk about N1. I think most of us know what happened with that. But if a repeat of that happens around Boca Chica and South Padre Island, it is going to put the brakes on the entire program for six months to a year, and Elon Musk has said as much. That being the case, I think it's far more likely that once a static fire campaign and wet dress rehearsal are completed with Booster 7, then S-24 is going to be removed from the stack and placed atop the improved Booster 9, which hasn't been through the test ringer the way Booster 7 has. Booster 9 is ready for a launch at this point, perhaps they'll need to carry out another 33-engine static fire with Booster 9 before they actually attempt an orbital launch, but in my opinion, that is the safest way to proceed. And it's also worth noting that Elon Musk is not directly in charge of these operations anymore. Gwen Shotwell is calling a great deal of the shots, pun not intended, and in addition to that, there's somebody who's very sensible, who's been in charge of this overall operation as far as Starship is concerned. And that's Mark Juncosa, VP of Engineering at SpaceX, but more importantly, a former head of Starlink. And Starlink is extremely important to this guy, and Starlink is not going to be a profitable endeavor without the version 2 Starlink satellites, and those cannot be deployed without Starship. Now, of course, that would make one think that he would want to get Starship into orbit as rapidly as possible, but the surest thing that would sabotage not only Starship, but also the future of Star 
Starlink would be an anomaly at Boca Chica. Again, as I've said, something that would set the program back for 6 to 12 months. Therefore, this guy is highly incented to not only make sure that this proceeds as rapidly as possible, but to make sure that it proceeds without incident. And you're not going to do that with Booster 7. But given that a propellant load is taking place as I am recording this conclusion, well, it does seem that things are well on their way. So smash that like, hit that subscribe. We are so close to 100,000 now, guys. Only 6,000 subscribers away. Please tell your friends and family members to subscribe. And also check the description for ways to keep this content coming. And as always, stay angry about space.